This is the 14th and last video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. We're going to continue and finish up talking about record keeping. Uh, Texas Administrative Code, the regulations adopted by the Veterinary Board, include specific requirements for the contents of records. A number of other states have similar regulations, and I recommend that you pay attention to those regulations. For the chiropractors in particular, this gives you a good guideline for the information that needs to be in the records, and it helps you again establish that good credibility with the veterinarians who are supervising the care you provide. Some of these are pretty obvious, include obviously the, the name and address of client, include the patient's identity, patient's history, include the dates of visits, uh, immunization records. Uh, even though you're providing chiropractic care and not providing immunizations, it may be a good idea for you to ask about immunizations and to confirm that the animal has received all the immunizations they should. Uh, weight, if required for diagnosis or treatment. Of course, weight may be estimated if actual weight is difficult to obtain. So, for example, if you're working on cows out in the pasture, there may not be a scale handy or the cow may not be willing to go to the scale. So you may estimate their weight in that situation. Uh, the animal's temperature, if required for diagnosis or treatment, uh, except when you're treating a herd, flock, or a species, it is difficult to take their temperature. Any laboratory analysis, uh, blood work, or other lab work should be reported in the file. Any radiographs that are taken, any x-rays should be reflected in the file. For any drug that is prescribed, administered, or dispensed, include the names, dosages, concentration, and routes of administration. Of course, as a chiropractor, you should not be administering drugs. Uh, even under the supervision of a veterinarian, I would be very cautious about administering drugs because that is not something you have been trained to handle. The Texas rule then goes on to include what I call a catch-all phrase, any other details necessary to substantiate the examination, diagnosis, and treatment provided or the surgical procedure performed. Again, chiropractors, you shouldn't be providing surgical procedures. The record should also include any signed acknowledgement Remember that we talked earlier about chiropractic being an alternative to traditional veterinary medicine, and Texas requires that the client consent to that chiropractic care and that they acknowledge that they have been told it is an alternative care. Each entry in the record should identify the veterinarian or other provider who performed the service, as well as the veterinarian who supervised the procedure uh, if it was only supervised by a veterinarian. Uh, changing your records, we've talked a little bit about this already. We've talked about making changes in an appropriate manner. These last three bullet points deal with cases where the doctor tried to change the records and it did not come out very well for the doctor. In the Kaplan case, the doctor changed the file after a claim was made. Unfortunately, what the doctor forgot was that he had already sent a copy of the file to another provider. So it was fairly easy to catch this doctor by comparing those two records. Uh, losing the file is not a good option either. In some states, losing the file will create a rebuttable presumption that you were careless. And even if it doesn't create a rebuttable presumption, in terms of presenting to a jury, it's very difficult to explain in a believable way that you're a good, careful, caring doctor, but you failed to keep track of the file. Losing part of the file may also result in problems. In the Keene case, the doctor lost part of the file uh, and was uh, sanctioned for spoliation of evidence or changing or destroying evidence uh, and, and lost that case as well. I say lost that case, but I think in all three of these, they wound up being settlements. So to wrap things up, let's kind of take things on a lighter note. 
share with you some advice from an old farmer. Keep skunks, bankers, and lawyers at a distance. None of them are good to deal with. Life is simpler when you plow around the stump. We've talked about a lot of different rules and regulations, and depending upon the state that you practice in, they may be more or less uh, difficult or clearer than what we've talked about today. It could be even more confusing than what I've talked about in these videos. But rather than complaining about it, the best route is to figure out how do you work around that stump and make things easier instead of trying to just plow right through it. Now, forgive your enemies. It messes up their heads. Being resentful is not going to ever help you. Do not corner something that you know is meaner than you. One problem that I've seen in, in working with professionals is doctors and lawyers tend to think that they are smarter and tougher than everybody else. Let me share a couple things with you. I don't care how tough or how smart you think you are. The judge is going to win. It's the judge's courtroom. You will always lose if you get crosswise with the judge. Just don't do it. You cannot unsay a cruel word. Say nice things about people. Remember what your mom or what my mom always told me. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Every path is a few puddles. Don't expect to practice this profession and not have any difficulties. You will. When you find those puddles, uh, learn the lessons that they have to teach you and enjoy them if you can. When you wallow with pigs, expect to get dirty. Pay attention to who you're associating with. If you're working with clients who are dishonest, who cheat, who don't pay their bills, guess what? They're going to treat you the same way. Don't judge folks by their relatives. That's just a good old country saying. Remember that silence is sometimes the best answer. Sometimes the best thing to do is to hold your tongue and your temper. Live a good, honorable life. Then when you get older and think back, you can enjoy it a second time. Don't interfere with something that ain't bothering you none. Don't go looking for trouble. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. If you get into trouble, figure out what you're doing that's causing the problem and stop engaging in that behavior. The biggest troublemaker you'll ever have to deal with watches you from the mirror every morning. Most of the problems you're going to find in life are going to be created by you and your conduct. Keep that in mind. That good judgment comes from experience, and a lot of that comes from bad judgment. Again, you're going to make mistakes. Things are going to go wrong. And when that happens, try to learn from it so that next time you can tell everybody that you've got good judgment based on your experience. Letting the cat out of the bag is a whole lot easier than putting it back in. If you are supposed to keep a secret, keep a secret. Once you've released the secret information, it's awfully hard to make it secret again. If you get to thinking you're a person of some influence, try ordering somebody else's dog around. No matter how friendly the dog is, if you aren't the owner, they're not very likely to listen to you. So that'll help keep you humble if you, if you keep that in mind. So I hope there's some good information that will help you for both the veterinarians and the chiropractors. Uh, and I wish all of you the best of the luck as you develop your animal chiropractic practice and as you help the profession grow and improve. Thank you.